Guess who's back? Back again. Based is back. Tell a friend. Oh, brothers and sisters, has it not been a great January 6th weekend? Happy Insurrection Day, everybody. 2.0. That far-right extremist Freedom Caucus stood up and said no to the great machine that chews us up and spits our money out in all sorts of directions while giving us nothing. So, I hope you've watched my first video where I talked about the progressive reaction to the... It did, they're labeled secondary insurrectionists. They're labeled traitors. They're labeled treasonous tyrants. They're labeled threats to democracy. They're labeled far-right extremists in the House. The Freedom Caucus. I sat down and I watched the vote and I laughed. And then I got up for the second vote and I made popcorn and I got my root beer and I sat down and I kicked my feet up and I laughed. I had three days of laughter, joy. Popcorn everywhere, mirth and merrymaking, joy in my heart. Because 20 people of principle stood up and said no to the machine unless you make serious rules. So now on this second video, I want to talk about some of, the, some of those things that have been done that will make the house different, that might make this a turn, if not a step in the right direction, but at least a turn that will return the Congress and the political machine of Washington into being representatives for the people as voted on by the people. I think this is a step in damming, if not draining the swamp. <clears throat> and so uh, first, the media and progressive reaction was funny. Uh, the, the choke by the neocon establishment as these lesser thans dared stand up to them and voice their opinion and demand a voice for their constituencies, to watch them choke, to watch them seethe, was a pleasure. I was in Washington, D.C., January 6th, 2021. When Biden was voted in, I did not go because of the Trump election. I went to D.C. to voice my displeasure with our ruling political class for passing that horrendous omnibus bill at the end of 2020. When Trump was on his way out, Biden would be coming in, and the Senate and the House just said, like, oop. You remember that one. Hey, Americans, you're going to get a 600 more dollars. We're also sending money to Pakistan for gender and equality issues. Um, we're giving money to the Smithsonian for diversity projects. We're funding the Kennedy Center. We're, and here's your $600. Our hard-earned money blown on pet projects by Congress. I did not go to the Trump rally. 
I had no interest in the Trump rally because I had no problem believing Trump lost. Four years of negative media smear, five if you include the run-up to the election. Two, ridiculously false, patently in-your-face false. The don't-believe-your-lying-eyes-and-ears false impeachment processions. Yeah, Democrats, you can hold out and say that Trump is the only two-time impeached president, but those were trumped-up, foolish charges with no merit or base to them whatsoever. So after four years of that, yeah, I could believe Trump lost. The never-Trumpers were out there, the, just the, the diehards, anyone but a Republican, the, uh, the blue-and-on wave was in effect. Blue-and-on. I could believe Trump lost. I didn't like it, but I could believe it. But what got me mad enough to fly to Washington was Congress passing those bills. Those you have to pass it to know what's in it bills, hearkening back to the American Care Act. Or American Affordable Care Act. Uh, ACA. <clears throat> that Republicans didn't stand up. The Republicans didn't say no. They were squishes. And that I hated. So two years later, when these 20 Freedom Caucus members stood out and said, that will not happen again. I loved it. That spoke to me as an American. That spoke to me as a conservative not necessarily a Republican. That spoke to me as a Christian because it's fighting for individual liberties. So let's talk a little bit about what their stand meant. No more late night introduction vote on a bill the next morning. I think, what is it, 72 hours now? They introduce a bill 72 hours after its introduction before it can be voted on so that these Congress people can actually read it, digest it, and know what's in it and actually be really accountable for passing stuff. There's no excuse. Well, I heard about this. I thought it was a great thing. I didn't know about that. That's gone. That's gone. That's gone. No more of these ad hoc committees putting together 5,000-page bills that will cost a trillion dollars, $2 trillion, and shoving it down the throats of the American people for my kids to pay off, for my grandkids, damn it. And I don't even have grandkids yet. For at least these two years, under this McCarthy administration, that's done. Hooray. A better way to challenge the Speaker of the House when he's not doing his job. It's easier to call into question the performance of your leaders now. To hold them more directly accountable. If they're not doing the will of the people, they can be challenged. Now, yeah, I, I know. The establishment's still in control. But if you do enough to even piss off the establishment, Pelosi did things that not all the Democrats, like she quashed, <laughs> she quashed the, uh, the bill that was being discussed. Um, what was it? The, uh, about investing while in office. Of course she did. Her personal wealth ballooned during her time in office. Of course she's going to crush it. But there was enough liberal out. The media kept this silent. The politicians aren't going to be held accountable for saying no to money. 
because this bill never went through. So now imagine that. Remember that that lobbying bill that Ted Cruz with AOC oddly tried to put through a few years ago? Leadership crushed it because it affected their wallets. Maybe something like that has a chance now. Maybe enough establishment because of their constituents at home will put pressure on them will actually stand up to the speaker in the face of bad ideas and poor governance and leadership. <clears throat> Maybe. Now, actually removing the speaker, <coughs> opposing him is one thing, removing him is another. I get that. They get that. But they can make their points more clearly, more easily, and force him to run on those things when he's home. It will force him to have a better record. Because maybe a MAGA first will primary the speaker or one of these neocon clowns that need that we need to get out of office. The Mike Rogers, the McCarthy's, the, the, the I hate to say it, the Crenshaws. These guys that don't. America's secondary to personal to personal issues. I like that. I like that they've prevented McCarthy from using his power of the purse strings as speaker to and the McCarthy packs to not come after the MAGA crowd, the MAGA politicians. Because McCarthy, submarine, Cawthorn. Whatever you think of Cawthorn, agree with him or disagree with him, McCarthy just decided that this guy was a nuisance and an irritant to him, and he needed somebody more establishment, mainstream. Mainstream's the word they like to use because it seems centrist. It seems common sense. It's They needed an establishment shill. So he nuked Cawthorn to bring in somebody who would give him support and power later. And that was the other thing. That was another reason that these guys stood up because McCarthy refused to deal with them. He thought he was going to have the votes. The red wave didn't happen. And then he found himself at the last minute having to cut deals and he was not willing to. And they stood up. And I love it. I love the fact that there will be an American first conservative on every committee. Look, it's 90% establishment, 10% America first in the House. If you just go by the 220 to 20, you know, whatever, okay? The, the, the 200 to 20 that the votes ended up being while those 20 stood out. But they'll have a voice on committees. They'll have a voice, a greater voice in hearings. They'll have a greater voice in drafting this legislation that's going to come up that then they'll have to read for three days before they vote on it. America first has a seat at the table because of these 20 people. I love this. I love the fact that the America First are going to hold greater accountability in any hearings coming up. Because we need honest hearings. I really, the Democrats, the Democrats hold the Senate. I don't even know if it's worth bringing up impeachment proceedings. I'm kind of torn on that. I'd like to see Biden's crimes brought more into light. Yeah, I know it's Hunter's laptop, but there's some evidence on there of dirty dealing for Joe and Joe's brother. For insider trading, for lack of a better term, with the Chinese and the Russians, setting up sweetheart deals. <sighs> I, I would like to see something come out about 
some inquiry made into Biden's trip to, oh, where'd he go? I'll just say Bahamas, the U.S. Virgin Islands, and having that, at the same time, a prosecutor was launching an investigation into Epstein and J.P. Morgan Chase. Now, Biden goes to these islands every year, I guess, every other year. But his visit, timed with this attorney general of the Virgin Islands being fired, as she's opening an inquiry, an investigation into J.P. Morgan's ties to Epstein on the islands. And you're going to say, oh, it's hokey, it's this, it's that. It's the same playbook they use to oust that uh, Ukrainian prosecutor that was looking into Burisma, hence the laptop. It, it's the same modus operandi. He's doing business the same old way. I would at least like a better look into that. I would like a look into what the big guy meant and any uh, kickbacks he got from Chinese and Russian companies for sweetheart deals to give them added power at the expense of America and Americans. And so I'm going to bring up a big one when it comes to hearings. And I hope you, I hope you listeners, I hope you're familiar with this. The church hearings. That they want to bring up a church committee and investigate. And it, you know, like the church, what? No, not the church. It's the church hearings. Named after, I think, John Church. in the, But it has to do with, I forget the guy's name. I'm blonde, sort of. But it has to do with taking a look at tech company involvement with the alphabet agencies of the United States government and the squashing of voices who ran counter to establishment policy. Now, those were largely conservative, but they do include some anti-war progressives, some leftists who were anti-war, who were anti-corporation, because the message is one of government and corporate interests being melded and squashing outside voices on COVID, on Ukraine, on Iraq, Afghanistan, on economic policy. Just look at what Elon, like I love this. I love that they're talking about starting this church committee. and a greater America First presence on this committee because that's part of the rules that they're going to pass through that McCarthy's promised for their support. Congress will take a better, harder, more intelligent look at what was going on with the FBI, the CIA, the IRS... fill in the blank to whatever organization you want to and the stifling of voices the stamping out of any counter narrative that those agencies did not like look at how they treated uh, Yoel Roth look at uh, James Baker being one of the lawyers inside the FBI and acting as a gatekeeper just Look at the possible years of work that has been done to undermine our government, the people's government, and to make it an elitist government. I hope to hear something more about this church commission in the future shortly. I hope it's given teeth. I hope it's given power. I hope they look at Biden. I love all of this stuff. I love the fact 
that the House controls the purse strings to the United States. I hope they take a second look at the funding of these 87,000 IRS agents that are there to go after the billionaires. How many billionaires are there? Why do they need 87,000? I bet they need it to look at my savings account. At my bank accounts to find out if I'm nickel and diming the government. Because they get to scare me, the little guy. They want to anyway, right? That's what it's all about. The government tax code is set up to give the rich loopholes. It is. The the 99%, the 99.5%, whatever you want to call it, the 95% of American citizens, not of the world, because that's a different topic. There's not an American who's not in the top 1% worldwide or 5%, whatever you want, but you get the idea. Even the poorest American does better than the majority of the world in terms of material wealth. And yeah, I do mean that. There's more for that. It can't be argued. I mean, we can argue it, but you're going to lose because it's stupid. But I want honest looks. I want accountability. Do you remember when James Comey stood up and said, well, yeah, Hillary broke the law with the emails, but she didn't mean to. And everyone's like, oh, that's why Hillary lost. She never should have been allowed to run. And she should have been locked up. Because I've been in the military. We all know people who did something stupid with information. Took a photograph in a tank or in a sub because you took a selfie. Locked up. Assange is doing time, essentially doing time, for outing Hillary and the corporate legacy media establishment for doing things that the rest of the establishment on both sides of the aisle are guilty of. And you're going to say, what does this have to do with the LDS? Because this is based LDS 1, we need to be principled people. We do. We absolutely have to be a principled people. I had a nice discussion, argument, with a friend of mine over what it meant for the Constitution to hang by a thread. Because I don't even... We kind of agreed. We agreed on what it meant that it would hang by a thread, but we disagreed on what that meant I think that all political institutions are going to have to fail before the second coming like the things of man have to fail so that we accept the things of God otherwise we'll hold on to to whatever and I can trust and believe in and love the constitution and I can want to try and make it apply in my life and my community all I want. But when the leaders deny the active use and enforcement of that constitution in our government, it's no longer of effect. It's distorted. They have corrupted the system that should use the Constitution in order to cut out parts of it so that it's not applicable in their governing and power-grabbing processes. And I think we're seeing the destruction of the Constitution, and I think these 20 people stood up and slowed that degradation down. I do. I pray that it lasts. I don't know that it will. 
But I do love this country. And I think every person of every nationality, you should love your country. But you should look at your government with a skeptical eye and say, what are they up to? And you should look at a media that's become globally corrupt, morally bankrupt globally. And you need to listen to those few independent voices. And we may not agree, but we're being honest. The Jimmy Doors, the Tim Pools, the Lotus Eaters, and Carl Benjamin, a.k.a. Sargon of Akkad. Shout out, glad you're back on Twitter. Not that you know who I am. Although I will be on Twitter soon. But I am so glad that these things are being done because the establishment has to take a step back. Let reform take a possible hold. But we need people of integrity and honor and principle to stand up and make sure that these things are enforced. So good luck and God bless. And to you, my base LDS followers, I love you. Thank you. Hey, respond. Comment. Let's talk about stuff. Let's build a community of believers and patriots, no matter where you are. Love you. Thank you. Thank you. Peace out.